My name is Art Furtado, and I am exhibiting at the Southbridge Jacob Edwards Library. I have uh, been doing art since I was eight years old. I've worked drawing and painting since I have been in college and have taught art at the Shepherd Hill Regional High School for 35 years. After that, I worked with the Center of Hope, helping teach art to the handicapped people. And now just work with the, the uh, Ruth D. Wells Center for the Arts. And I work with the uh, Open Studio on Thursdays. And I am, have the pleasure of working with other artists at the same time. I've lived in the area for over 50 years and have gone to the Southbridge Library over 50 years. And I would like to show you uh, the works that I have on the display right now, if it's all right. Uh, starting on this side, we have two acrylic paintings that were done in the style of the Dutch and Flemish paintings. They were uh, somewhat difficult to do, but it was a challenge. These two on this side are photographs. One recent, this was taken in Brewster down at the Cape uh, doing a sunset series. The one on the right is a still life done on film, medium format, years ago and the entire image is illuminated by the candle in the lantern. It was about a five to 10 minute exposure. What kind of a camera did you use? Do you know? I used a medium format Mamiya C3 camera. On this panel, all four of these paintings were done from scenes in California. The one on the left was done in the Mission in Oceanside, California. These three were all done at Balboa. These are subjects from Balboa Park in San Diego. I happen to like the vegetation and the arches, obviously. You'll notice there's an arch in every painting. And I like the Spanish architecture, the influence. And uh, this painting had a special meaning to me because uh, my godfather, who was in the Navy, was photographed by that fountain. And I felt it was a nice thing to do to paint it for him. There are two paintings on this panel that were a challenge. The top one is the Boulevard Diner on Shrewsbury Street. I had seen other artists doing diners and I thought it might be a cool idea. That painting took about 35 hours of work. The painting below it is a watercolor on paper of a Model A Ford. The actual car was at a place in Vermont and it was harvest time. You can tell by the leaves. It was an enjoyable experience and I like sharing that experience through the painting. The uh, one in the Boulevard Diner painting is a 56 Thunderbird, Ford Thunderbird. And I have an antique car, that's my hobby. Painting is not a hobby, it's my, what I love to do. So on this panel, we have uh, three paintings that I did trying to learn about Winslow Homer's style of painting. The top two are done in watercolor on 140 pound paper. The bottom picture is actually done in a system called Prismacolor. It's a colored pencil, professional quality pencil system. And that painting is called Nor'easter. This one is called Crab Fishing. And this one up top is in a Florida jungle. On this side, I had wanted to try doing a Corvette larger size detail painting 
It took quite a while, and I actually put it aside because I wasn't comfortable that it was done right. And then years later, I picked it up and finished it. And that drawing I did from a friend of mine actually owns that car. We were at a car show, and I photographed just this headlight, and I thought it would make a good subject. So do you normally um, photograph and then uh, do a drawing or? Quite often. Or would but you do it from life? I do it from Plenty real life well. whenever I can. I see. Most artists will tell you that it's better to work from real life. Photographs are not always accurate. The bottom right picture is of an, I think around 1930s, sports sedan. And I did that one as a challenge because doing chrome is Kind of challenging, you'll notice on the Corvette also, the Chrome. The both of those took quite a, quite a long time to do, but they are like photographic when you get them done. The uh, painting of the owl eyes I did because I saw at a show somebody had done just animal eyes, and I said, I gotta try that. So first I did the owl eyes, and that was done in watercolor, on watercolor paper. These two were done on toned gray paper for the husky and toned tan paper for the cat eyes. And um, I've, I've got a lot of pleasure doing them, but again, it was one challenge that I wanted to try. And I recommend for anybody who works in art or any other area, when you get frustrated with whatever you're working on, that's a signal, it's time to take a break. And when, sometimes when you come back, very often when you come back, you're fresh again, and you resolve whatever the issue was. The panel on the left is a pen and ink on illustration board that I did of the Art Center in Southbridge many, many years ago, 1998. At that time, I was on the board of directors. Uh, Christine O'Brien also had done one, a very fine one, and uh, they wanted to know if I would do one. So I did, and again, it's a tedious process, but pen and ink, um, you have to be really careful. There are a lot of ways to correct it if you make a boo-boo. And so I usually did everything in pencil lightly and then did it with ink. But um, a few weeks ago, I finally donated the original image to the center. The picture on the right is of Nosset Lighthouse. And I did that while I was studying at the Worcester Art Museum. I have a thing for lighthouses, you'll probably notice. And it's partly uh, symbolic and it's spiritual also, the idea of a light being a saving grace when you're out to see. The techniques on the uh, hay and the grass in the foreground is a trick process where you work layers, and uh, it's tedious, but it plays out well. Okay, and this panel, my introduction, my biographical sketch, of course. The panel on top is a watercolor breaching wheel, is the name of it. Did that some years ago. I used some of the techniques Winslow Homer used on doing the water, but the rest of it was from a photograph. The bottom image is a Boston Lighthouse from a photograph. It's done in graphite on illustration board. Boston Lighthouse is the oldest lighthouse in the United States. This is not the original Boston Lighthouse. The original one, when the British were retreating from Boston, they made it a point to destroy the lighthouse. They knocked it to the ground. And this lighthouse that's there now was a rebuilt one. At the age of five years old, my parents began taking us to the art museum at Museum of Fine Arts. My father always enjoyed art. They um, saw that I liked to draw and encouraged it. When I talk in there, I'm gonna be telling people that young people that have a knack or a interest in an area that's productive should be greatly encouraged to pursue it. And I give thanks that my parents were that way. They never tried to direct us into an area. They watched, they saw what we liked to do, 
and they encouraged it. Unfortunately, in high school, I was not allowed to take art. They said, my guidance counselor said, you can't make a living at art, and you will have to support a family someday. So they gave me mechanical drawing drafting. And I don't resent it because I learned a lot through that also. But once I got to college, I went back to the art area. And to a, to a degree, they were right. I mean, uh, people who live on their art alone without teaching or marketing, it's hard to make a living. Unless you uh, are incredibly talented and you have the right direction. Okay, on well, this panel are two ocean wave breaking paintings. Again, something I wanted to try for a long time. And so this one is based on an image from Oceanside, California that I photographed. And the one on the right would be more like an Atlantic kind of wave. It's kind of fun to do and I hope to do more, just focusing on waves. The painting below has a funny name. It's called the Boston Hooker. It has nothing to do with what you may think, but it's the type of boat it is. And the boat is pulling behind it a dory. That entire painting was done with two colors, orange and blue. Everything else on that painting was a mixture of orange and blue. I didn't use white, I didn't use black. The painting on this side, that's right here, uh, was just a study in doing washes while I was at college. And it was a country road, little barn, and some shadows and things, and I liked it. I said it should be in a frame. And it's not very large, but enjoyable. This is work on the gray tone paper. And it's a study in pen and ink, and the other medium was the Prismacolor pencil system. And what I did here was lay it out in pencil, did the entire thing with ink, and then with the Prismacolor, I was able to make the windows look like there was a strong glow inside. And a little bit of the blue, like where the ocean is off in the distance. Strictly a perspective study. In the early days, so that I wouldn't have to sell the originals, I would make prints and bring the prints to the show on quality paper. And then the person could buy a print rather than the original. The trouble is you now wind up with so many original paintings. So the library gets 15% of any sales that are made and it goes to the friends of the library who all use the money to support the programming at the library. Correct. So it has a very nice uh, uh, investment in future programming. Well, I think what you're doing is a huge investment in the arts. And you do it every month and we're very, very thankful for that. Let's go on. Now we get back to my ocean scenes that I like to do. This one is uh, Rockport Harbor. Uh, it was early in the morning with like a mist or a fa uh, kind of a fog. And I photographed and said, that would make a nice painting. By the way, I add a lot of my own little touches. Like the foreground I added in with the stones just to give a foreground. So you have a foreground, middle ground, and background. I had the comment made on this painting by a football coach who his wife said, oh, look at this. And the man said, I didn't know you could paint fog. <laughs> but again, he was a football coach. <laughs> Holy cross. He did a lot better than I did at football. This is the lighthouse on Block Island on the right. It's a watercolor uh, done a number of years ago. And it's the Southeast light. They have two lighthouses. One on the north, on the opposite side. And that's kind of creepy looking, but this one's all brick. And this was, again, a painting that took hours and hours and hours. And I sold many copies of it. And uh, I'm glad because I still have the original. This is the most recent painting I did, and I did that in open studio with some friends of mine. And uh, it wasn't a real tedious long painting, but I just liked the way it came out. And I wanted to frame it to give it that, you know, salty look. So open studios on, on what day? Thursday afternoons, one yeah. to three. Okay. 
at the art center. And what's one's ability? Do you have to be like really we efficient? We are open or? to all levels. We have some people who paint very, very well, and we have some that are learning. But I always bring cookies, <laughs> and everybody seems to like the cookies. The one on the left is uh, Sagres of Lilies. That painting I did also in the art museum, I believe, when I was studying. And I really liked it. That one I probably would sell, but I'd miss it. Um, a couple of years ago, they have a, a thing at the art museum in Worcester called Flora in Winter. And uh, during the uh, pandemic, I sent them an electronic image of that, and they wanted it. Actually, they used it in their advertising and things. And then they contacted me and said, we'd like to put it into the exhibit, the actual painting. So that, that was exhibited at the uh, Worcester Art Museum. And the one on the right is called Grandma's Chair. It's an acrylic on canvas. The subject of this painting, that porch patio area, actually is on Main Street in Charlton. There is no ocean on Main Street in Charlton. I wish there were sometimes. So I, I went over, photographed it while they were building it, so there were no handrails. There were no other things to distract it. And as I started the painting, I said, you know what, it needs a different background. So that's where the ocean came in. And instead of grass, I put it on sand. And the rest of it is exactly the way it was, including the chair. So I spoke to the owner of the building and I said, what's with the chair? And she said, her grandmother used to go out every day and rock in that chair and look in the woods. I wish she had been seeing the ocean. And after she passed, apparently they left the chair right where she would sit. So it had to be in the painting. And uh, that's a keeper. I don't think I want that one gone. I like that painting a lot. I like them all, but that one I like a lot.